in the building, everybody online. Oh, join together and magnify the Lord with us. Hallelujah. Give God the very best praise right now. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and exalt Him. Our God is worthy. Our God is mighty. Our God is glorious. I'm not going to stop till the world knows. Tell somebody high. He is high and lifted up. He's glorious. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Find somebody around you. Welcome them to the house of the Lord. Say hi. Good to see you in church. Glad you're here in the house of the Lord. If you see a guest, connect with them right now. Let them know how thankful you are to see them in the presence of the Lord. Good to have Cyan home from school. Welcome her home. God bless you. Good to see you. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our guests that are here today, we want to connect with you. And if you see in the seat back pocket in front of you a guest connect card and wouldn't mind to share your information with us, we want to connect with you and just get the opportunity to greet you, let you know how thankful we are that you're in the house of the Lord with us today. It's Global Mission Sunday. We're so thankful for the missionary spirit of the United Pentecostal Church and Cornerstone Tabernacle. We believe in missions. Man, mission of the church. This morning I was thinking about the founding of the United Pentecostal Church and, and how that oneness groups who baptized in Jesus' name and believed this wonderful truth in the year of 1944 and 45 started conversation about merging and coming together for the purpose of taking the whole gospel to the whole world. And I'm so thankful that in 1945, October 1945, that this great fellowship formed, and it has been the foremost and preeminent purpose of this church is to get the gospel to the whole world by the whole church. The whole gospel to the whole world by the whole church. I'm so thankful for mission. We're very committed to missions. In fact, Brother and Sister Vandemark, I commend them and this great church for sending an offering of over $10,000 to move the mission, $10,400 and something dollars on Monday. Let's give the Lord praise for that. Praise God. Hallelujah. I give you glory, God. I give you glory. Why are you so excited? Thank you for asking. I'll tell you. Because... These offerings that we send in move the gospel and move the mission of the church into regions that we would probably never be able to go there ourselves. And we're a participant in it. Today we're so thankful to have Brother and Sister Simino with us who are occasional attenders at Cornerstone and becoming more so. And they are retired missionaries. They're going to be speaking in a little while. We're so excited about their ministry but before they come, we want to bring our Global Missions Director, Sister Brenda Hillis, is doing a wonderful job. She has a great uh, co-director riding shotgun with her. Brother, Brother uh, Hillis is just doing a great job setting up flags and doing whatever she says do. <laughs> Give her a great big welcome as she comes with our missions report. today. This month we heard from Brother and Sister Kelly in Northern Europe and the UPC of Great Britain and Ireland were able to hold their 53rd General Conference in person this year. They had great services. 14 received the Holy Ghost and 4 were baptized. <laughs> from Brother and Sister Parker in Malta, they are currently at full capacity in the facility the Lord provided two years ago and are looking for a bigger place. They've also started work on setting up a Bible school and they already have 14 students signed up for their first semester. Glory. Glory. Brother and Sister Robertson in the Philippines report in their first post-pandemic Southeastern District Fellowship 
15 received the Holy Ghost. From the glory. From the Tolsteads in Uganda, a former lady witch doctor was delivered from many years of deceiving people. She received the Holy Ghost, was baptized, and is now preaching the gospel in the country of Uganda. Glory. Glory. You're not going to get too far away from the Lord that he can't use you. Whatever. From the Wicked family in Fiji, we had the privilege of flying to the island of Tabayani. Over three days, we saw 51 baptized in Jesus' name. Then three were filled with the Holy Ghost and one baptized at a marriage seminar. And in the Central District Conference, 53 were filled with the Holy Ghost and 61 were baptized. Lord. And from the Benson family in Benin, in the last four months, we've had four new churches open. During a revival in late July, 121 baptized in Jesus' name, 32 filled with the Holy Ghost. Lord. This world seems so sad. You know, we, we see children that are being raised up so confused. They don't even hardly have a chance because that's all they've known is a world that's this confused. But it's not going to stop the Lord. The Lord is working, and the Lord can find a way to save the people that are hungry, no matter what's going on in this world, no matter how bad it gets. The Lord is there, and the Lord will help. Just reach up a hand. He's reaching down all the time, and he's got a way to save us. Glory. Glory. This weekend, my husband and I had a special blessing. We were in a restaurant, and we had finished eating, and the waitress came up and said, can I get you anything else? And we said, no, we're finished. And she said, well, you don't have a, a ticket today. And it's like, what? She said, you don't have a ticket. Someone paid for your meal tonight. And I, I suppose my face showed my surprise because she, her face just lit up. And she said, no, someone pay, paid for your meal today. And we're like, who? Who paid for her meal? Well, I'm not supposed to tell you. But she looked so joyful. You know, it's like she had a part in the blessing that we got. And I was thinking, you know, that's us. That's us. We, we can't give someone salvation, but we can help. You know, we can introduce someone to the Lord. We can invite them. Have you ever heard the saying, it was the straw that broke the camel's back? And, it, and a straw is not going to break a camel's back, but it's that one more little piece added on something that does it, that breaks it all down. And I'm thinking, you know, I can't do anything big. I don't have a fortune I can give. I'm not a great speaker. I'm, I'm not in another country. I'm not preaching the gospel. But I could be the straw that someone is so close. All they need is just one kind word. All they need is one more dollar given to a missionary somewhere. All they need is a word spoken. All they need invite to church and you can be the straw that led that person to the gospel of Jesus Christ and led them to be saved. You have the ability to add one little straw and that's all it takes to save someone's soul and then let them into the kingdom of God. Glory. expect anything great. God doesn't expect you to move mountains. All God expects you to do is be that one little piece of straw that helps someone find the gospel of Jesus Christ and their salvation. Praise the Lord, everybody. You will never get any closer to the heartbeat of God than when you start talking about people and souls. 
and winning people and reaching for people. Some of us work 80 hours, 70, 100, whatever your schedule is, so you may not have the ability to go. But I submit to you that every person, whether it be giving to missions or in this altar here, every person that prays through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, every person that Jesus impacts their life, what you have, what you give, I feel the Holy Ghost, and I feel a witness of the Spirit of God. This isn't about what I can get out of. you do when you give and you open your hands and you give to the cause of God it does it does something to him when my motives are for that so we're going to give this morning we're going to take up uh, we're going to give stewardship we're going to pray over that this morning stand to get to it. I think back in Mississippi, I don't know, I don't know the circumstances. I do not know the circumstances. But I know that Brother Dylan, I think he had all the men baptize their wallets one night. And that's not an exaggeration. They all went into the baptism. So our ushers are coming. We're going to pray over this. Lord, we thank you for your kindness and mercy. We thank you for the blessings that you poured into our lives. And God, this morning we give to you for the cause of the kingdom, for the work of God, to missions, to home missions alike in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you would bless every hand that gives. We pray, God, that you bless every hand that does not have to give. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Pentecost, have, have a time of worship right now. Take the service right now. Just worship God. The miracle is in this house. You can have a miracle right where you are. You can experience a touch of God's power and miraculous presence. Right where you are right now, His presence is there. Oh, a miracle. Would you join with me and lift our hands as high as we get them to the Lord? of conduit where the glory of the Lord will come down. We need a move of your presence, Jesus. We're worshiping your name. We're exalting your name. Now send down your glory. Send down your glory. Somebody in this room, call on the Lord with us right now. Everybody entertained his presence. I know there's a lot of moving parts going on right now, but focus on Jesus with us. Oh, we worship your name. We exalt your name, Lord, how great you are. Somebody can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost right here, right now. Hallelujah. It's not just happening in primitive areas across the world. Right here, right now. announcements I want to mention. Uh, this coming Tuesday, October the 4th at 6 p.m. is our first Tuesday ladies prayer service. I'd love to see about 35 or 40 ladies in there praying, hear them praying to the Lord, calling on the Lord. Be sure to mark your calendars for that. Our general conference of the United Pentecostal Church is coming up this week. Wednesday through Friday in Orlando, Florida. Brother Machuca is going to be able to go to the conference. I don't know if anyone else.
Christ that he is planning on going. Brother Machuca is a chaplain of our Veterans Administration and attends this church. He's an ordained licensed minister. He'll be traveling there to participate in chaplaincy things. So, Brother Machuca, go in Jesus' name. Peace of God be on you. Pray some people through down there because they sure need it down there in Orlando. received the uh, prayer focus for this week in your email this morning. It is for our general conference, so be sure to be sure to note that. Be praying this week. Uh, great things will happen. I last I heard, fourteen or fifteen thousand people are registered to attend. So it's going to be a great event. Next Sunday, October the 9th, is our four hundred one Kingdom Offering Sunday. Remember that. I do want to mention this, although it is one of our ministries and we depend on every ministry to advertise their things and get them out, but this one involves a lot of the church family because over 40% of our church is single, unmarried, and so I want to mention that there's a single adult ministry gathering on the 16th of October, 6 o'clock p.m. Been a great time for fellowship, connection. You'll come away smelling like a bonfire, I've heard. So uh, enjoy that. It is so important. Fellowship is so vital and important to what God is doing in your life. And so be sure to, to mark your calendars for that, all of you who participate in single adult ministry. October is a very special month, and it is a cancer awareness for ladies. Uh, and so we're want to be praying all month long every time you drive by a building that's lit up pink just make it a time of prayer for all of the ladies of our community and our church family who's battling cancers we just believe God is able to heal he is able to heal us amen and so pray a special prayer every time you think of it this month it's also ministry appreciation month particularly pastor appreciation month but we have opted to celebrate all of our ministry and our, our preachers that preach the gospel and their wives. And today it worked out. We recognized yesterday morning, midday, that this could be the only Sunday in October that we would have all of our ministers' wives together with us in one service. And we have 15 of them. <laughs> it's awesome. I want to get out of the way so you can look at them. Fifteen ladies who have their companion is in active ministry or retired ministry or women of worth. United Pentecostal Church has a group of ladies called women of worth and these are those ladies whose husbands have passed away and they still linger with a fragrance of ministry on their life. You can't give yourself to God for many years in ministry and then lose maybe the speaking part of the ministry and now what am I left to be or become? But I want them to know that Cornerstone Tabernacle has a place for every minister and their wife. Amen. Cornerstone, would you stand and give these ladies a wondrous, thunderous, we love you with your hands. This is awesome. You may be seated. Brother Kyle Vandermark, come and help me if you would, please. We have a, a, something today that we want to hand out to each of them. And Sister Burns... Uh, is our first lady. And anybody that has to put up with me is special. <laughs> and I'm so thankful for our first lady. I know her from behind the scenes in Cornerstone Tabernacle. You are blessed. You are blessed of the Lord. Give her a great big welcome as she comes to speak about our ladies. Thank you all. 
I love each one of you, and I think you all know that. <laughs> let, me, let me get my emotions under control here a minute. I appreciate you all so much and all that you do. And I want to honor these ladies today. Um, I want to tell you that, and you probably have already seen this, but as Pastor mentioned a minute ago, usually it's the male, the man who's the speaking part of the ministry. That's not always the case, but usually that's how it is. And the lady is um, behind the scenes many times. E every team is different. Every husband and wife couple, they have their own, their own, um, I don't know how to say this, their, their own way that they do things, their own style. Some ladies are strong in one area, and some ladies just are behind the scenes taking care of their husband, their children, if they have children. But we want to take this opportunity today to honor each one of them. Um, sometimes it feels like for ladies in, who are in ministry that the man just gets out there and does his thing and they just, they, you know, nobody knows who they are. And I know that's not the case here. And I'm, I'm thankful for a church that you treasure these ladies. We all treasure them because what they do behind the scenes, the prayers that they pray, the strength that they bring to this congregation and to the people that are around them, the people in their circle of influence is astronomical. We have no idea how many battles that these ladies have fought in prayer. We have no idea how many victories that we have seen as a congregation because of these precious ladies. And today, I'm going to ask you one more time to stand and give honor where honor is due. things have happened here because of these ladies and we are so thankful for each one of them and we love you all so very 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 much now they're all going to preach <laughs> they've heard enough of their husband's sermons that they should have one that they can pick out and preach real fast We're so thankful. We love to celebrate our ladies in ministry. And we want to pray a special prayer. You've appreciated and applauded them for their work. But we want to pray a special prayer over them. Our best days are never behind us. As people of God, our best days are always now. The Bible doesn't say that he saved the best wine for last know that. I wouldn't say that. He saved the best wine for now. And I want these ladies to make a claim of promise today that no matter what kind of sorrow or pain or whatever life has dealt them, that my best days are not behind me. My best days are in front of me. My best days are now. Would you extend a hand toward these precious ladies? And I would like for them to join hands, if possible, by just somebody right there beside them. Just, just team up a couple of you together. And pray for one another. Pray the blessing of God upon this great group of ladies today. Lord Jesus, I pray an anointing of the Holy Ghost to rise within them, to saturate their emotions, their feelings, their, the anointing to use them in a powerful end time army let them join together in prayer let them be a unit of power 
power and strength for one another and for the kingdom of God. Somebody in this tabernacle, lift up your voice with boldness with me right now. God is going to give you a greater anointing. God is going to give you a fresh anointing. In the Holy Ghost, we thank you, Jesus. Now let's give the Lord praise. Let's give the Lord praise and honor and glory. Hallelujah. to love on our ministers, don't we? Our team's going to be escorting them to their seats. We're so thankful for this time. Thank you for allowing it. Pray. Glory to the Lord here right now. You won't go wrong, church, honoring ministry in your life. You will not go wrong doing it. So keep on having that spirit of honor and appreciation. We're so thankful to have with us today the ministry of Brother and Sister Seminole few months back we connected and uh, just became acquainted and the presence of the Lord was in our time together. They made us aware of their involvement at Urshan College and both of them are very involved in the, the work of raising up the next generation. They've been involved in that in their ministry field and their field of calling and today Brother and Sister Seminole are going to come minister the Word of God. They're going to share their life and passion and ministry with us. And before they come, we're going to pray for the Lord to just bless this gathering today with a missionary call. I've only received a couple of text messages, and I understand the pain associated with it. Why are we sending people out? We're trying to build a church. Saints of God, this is how you build the church. Is you send. The apostolic church is a sending church. And if we'll keep our hands open, send when God says send, He will fill our hands in His perfect plan. But I believe that there are young people here today. There's some that are not so young that have a missionary call on their life. It may be local in North American missions. It may be in the foreign field, but as they minister today, I believe God is going to sweep this auditorium with a fresh call and a fresh commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Would you join with me and let's pray that prayer together. Father, thank you today for this wonderful and awesome team that is coming to minister to us. Let your holy presence settle upon this house. Let every heart hear the call and the commission to enjoin your great purpose of missions. For this, we will give you praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Give Brother and Sister Simino a warm welcome to this pulpit. song that we sang earlier in the service and to begin the service is the essence of missions whether it be home missions or, or foreign missions thank you so much Pastor Burns for giving us the privilege of uh, sharing our story here this morning and as I share this I want to let you know that it's not story. It is our story. Um, as far as we know and can reconstruct, this church took us as a partner in missions before, well, when we were first appointed. We spent about 30 years on the mission field and you were our partners during that whole time. So whatever we tell today, whatever stories we share, whatever you feel, whatever you see, you had a very definite part and hand in that happening. I know a lot of missionaries, and I do not know any missionaries that have enough resources to take themselves to a mission field and 
to support themselves for four years, much less 30 years. So the stories that we tell are, are not just our stories, but they are your stories. And in a very, very real way, whether you realize it or not, and I think that it is still true today, the sun never sets on the ministry of this church. Think about it. There are people that you support who have been around the world and are around the world in various different places today, and they are representing, you are, you are represented there. The sun never sets on your ministry. It's what we did together that I want to, to talk about. Now, I already had this plan to say, but uh, a, a giving church is a growing church. And a growing church is a giving church. Now, I've, I've been to some churches that said, we love mission. But when I look around, when I looked around, I didn't find enough evidence for a conviction. But you talk the talk, but you you also walk the walk. When first that I came into this, as a matter, as a matter of fact, I think probably the first services that we came to were services that had a mission emphasis. And, and I'm gonna tell you something. You you've got an evangelist here, Sister Hillis. Yeah. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Amen. Uh, she did a she did a fantastic job a couple of weeks ago, and she did a fantastic job this morning. She did, you should have just turned her loose. Praise God. Amen. All right. I want to tell some stories this morning, and uh, the stories. Well, Sister Simino and I are both going to tell some stories going to do something, then I'm going to introduce her. I will tell a few stories from, we served in the nations of Tanzania, Kenya, Sierra Leone, and Botswana for various different lengths of time. We served in Tanzania about 10 years. We served in Botswana for about 15 or 16 years. She'll tell some stories about Botswana. I will tell, give some statistics here in a moment about the church that we helped to found in, uh, in Botswana. But I want you to remember, everything this lady says, this is a Christian right here, okay? Everything she tells you, you can believe. Now, everything I tell you, you know, uh, <laughs> it, is, it is a fact that the older I get, the better I was. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Well, let me let me say let me let me. Uh, the Lord has given me a little bit of a stop here to to, to to back up and talk just a little bit. Somebody said preach. Well, I, you know, uh, I can't avoid a little bit of something in there, but uh, that's not necessarily what I'm here for. And I want to allow plenty of time for Sister Semino to do her her part of this. I talked a little bit of, a moment ago about giving. The evidence. Pastor, please don't stop. Church, please don't stop. It is not a normal thing to go into churches and they have an emphasis of a missions Sunday. And they give generous amounts of time to that subject. I'm telling you, church, a giving church is a growing church and a growing church is a giving church. Okay? And I'm not just talking about giving your dollars. I'm talking about giving your sons and your daughters. I am a missionary from the top of my balding head to the soles of my cowboy boots. I have been a missionary for decades. All of my children have been fully appointed missionaries. Many of my grandchildren were born on the mission field, including one daughter, one grandchild born in Russia. So I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sometimes it's harder to separate with, with people than it is to separate with money. Okay? Let me give you a little bit of a, 
of a promise. I, I'm, I'm not a prophet, but I will make you this promise. God has not forgotten what you have sacrificed to do. What you see and what we present, I hope excites you. I hope it blesses you. I hope it rewards you. But God has not forgotten where you are as a church. He's not forgotten that you're trying to build a church. And sometimes you build a church by giving. You give of your resources. You give of your wealth. But you also give of your, we could, we could, put it, we could even term it this way, you even give of your blood. Because sometimes you have to turn loose of people that you really, really love. God has not forgotten where you are. And in the not too distant future, I'm not going to tell you. I, I wish somebody could, I wish I could have done the math. How much you have contributed. I guarantee you, you would be amazed at the sum of money that you have contributed to home and foreign missions over 77 years of giving to God and giving to the work of God. We won't stop till the whole world knows. That may, maybe that ought to be your theme as a church because that, that's actually what you're doing. It, it will not be long, church, before God blesses you and gifts you before God gifts you with something substantial in the area of people and in the area of finances. Okay? And you just you can write that down. If that doesn't happen, you can come back and throw rocks at me. All right. I've got some stories here to a couple of stories here to tell and then some statistics to share. Um in Tanzania, first couple of stories are from Tanzania. I wish I was as clever. Uh, let, me, let me tell you young men something. If you cannot be a genius, at least be smart enough to marry one. <laughs> now, Sister Seminole come up here. She's very professional. This is Dr. Seminole. She'll have some illustrations, some slides. She'll have a, she'll have a video clip. She'll, you know, she'll, she'll do it right. I'm just going to tell you some stories here, a couple of stories. Working on the foreign mission field, working in Tanzania. We lived in the city of Moshi, Tanzania, which is at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro, beautiful, beautiful uh, mountain, snow-capped mountain. <clears throat> wasn't always easy. wasn't always pleasant. We had different people that were, you know, not everybody welcomes you. We had people that were most definitely our enemy. We could call, could have called our they were enemies of the work of God. They were enemies of the truth. They were in, our enemies. And they were actively trying to get us kicked out of the country uh, one, one time. <laughs> seemed, like, seemed like about every 18 months when we lived in those countries, whether it was Tanzania or Botswana, we would have to fight for our lives to stay in the country and to keep our work alive. It's not always roses, not always great and, uh, and blessed stories. But we had people that were going to the government offices and they were complaining about us. I don't know what there is about me to, for anybody to complain about, but they, they went to the government offices, they were complaining. They wanted us kicked out of the country. They went to the top immigration people in our city with a plan to get us removed from the country. We knew about this and we were praying about it. There wasn't a whole lot that we could do about it except attend a meeting on a Monday morning in the offices of the top immigration officer for that whole section of the country. And we were, of course, we were uh, a little bit concerned about that. We ha were having services, evangelistic services, over the weekend. And we had several people that had prayed through to the Holy Ghost and several people that were praying in the altars. And in one of the evening services, and I believe that it was the Sunday night service, if I'm remembering this correctly, I'm telling you the best I can remember. In the Sunday night service, I was going from person to person, praying with people around the altar as people prayed for the Holy Ghost. And I stepped up to one man, and I noticed that he was, he was
was, he was short in stature, but he also had braces on his legs, and he was actually holding himself up with a pair of crutches. And I began praying for him, and he was praying earnestly. Matter of fact, he even, he even had tears running down his face. When a person has tears running down, Brother Cole taught, taught me this. He said, you go right down the altar, you find people, somebody who, who's crying, and they're about to get the Holy Ghost. If you just give him a little bit of attention, a little bit of instruction. I did not say a word to this man. I didn't have to. I locked my eyes on his face, and he, had, he was praying, and all of a sudden he began to speak in other tongues. And he opened his eyes, and the first thing he saw when he opened his eyes after speaking in tongues, I mean, he, he lit up like a light bulb. First thing he saw was this white face. We were introduced to him. I, I, I'm sorry, I cannot remember his name. Just a man in the altar. Just a, just a small man. A man with uh, braces on his legs and walking with crutches. The next morning, I dressed in my best suit, and I went down to the immigration office for the big meeting. I walked into the office and sitting behind the desk in that immigration office, the head of immigration was a small man with braces on his legs and supporting himself with crushes. His first order of business on a Monday morning was to see what he could do about this white man that everybody was complaining about. God's first order of business on Sunday night was to introduce me to that man, or introduce, yes, introduce me to that man and introduce me as he was a born again. <laughs> needless to say, we... I don't know what all took place, but needless to say, we did not have to leave the country. <laughs> Amen. That remi reminds me, Brother E.L. Freeman, and I appreciate the, um, you know, this is a, <laughs> I told Sister Seminole on the way to church this morning, I said, this is a, it's going to be a mission service, but it also could be a geriatric service. <laughs> I appreciate those of you that I see around the congregation. You've been here a long time. And you have, you have some age on you. You have some wisdom, some maturity. And many of you will know when I call the name E.L. and Nona Freeman. Brother Freeman always used to tell me, he said, don't worry about it. God's got it. God's always got a man. And sometimes God's got a woman. God had his man and set him in the right place. We were in another series of evangelistic services. This was after we had built our headquarters church. It wasn't an elaborate thing, but it was very serviceable. It was at the location where we had our Bible school. It was located in a compound that had a large bus stop. Um, uh, I'd love to tell you stories about the Matatus, the Colbys. And uh, uh, the story of the Matatu is it's, it's a 12-passenger van is what it is. I've seen as many as 27 people get out of one of those things. The story of a matatu is a matatu is never full until I'm in. That's the story. Anyway, we were our, our church is located very near that bus stop. We were holding evangelistic services in the evening and of, of course the buses they do not and the taxis they do not run on any kind of schedule. You just sit there and wait on them. Well a man who had been waiting for the taxi and I didn't find this out until later. I found this out, this was like on a uh, Saturday evening. I didn't find this out till the next day. A man who was waiting for the taxis came into the church and he, he sat down and I saw him. He was a distinguished looking man. His name was Andrew Mjema. He was a talented caterer. He worked for hotels and various different things like that. He's also, uh, became a very good friend of ours. Uh, he, he sat in the service, didn't make a move in those services. I spoke to him, I just spoke to him briefly, greeted him, and he, he went out. 
And uh, next day, Andrew and James is back in the Sunday morning service. But this time, he's got his wife with him and two children. We go through the service, and Andrew and his wife come up to pray in the altars. And I remember when I got to them and began to pray with them, and, and I don't have any particular, I've been to some people, know some people, trained some people who have great talent for praying people through the Holy Ghost. It's just their thing. Myself, I'm too self-conscious for that. I just, I can't, you know, I couldn't wrap myself around that. But I was amazed. I walked up in front of those two, began to pray with them just a little bit, and they both began to cry and speak in tongues almost instantly. I began to talk to Andrew. Andrew said, for three years, I have had a pain in my stomach. He said, right here. I've had this pain three years, day and night, three years. He said, I was waiting for the bus. God impressed me to come into this little building. So I sat down, began to listen. I noticed the pain's gone. The pain's gone. He, he said he, he moved, he tested it, he pushed on it, the pain's gone. He said the only thing on his mind was, I have to get home, get my wife, get my family, come back and see what this is all about. Something has happened. Amen. And I've, and I've already told you the story. I've already told you the story of how they came. And I mean, I was amazed at the, at the Tanzanians. Nobody had to coach them on how to get the Holy Ghost. You would tell them just open your mouth and say, say this and say thank you. Jesus, no, worse no, boom, they were speaking in tongues. Pastor, you enabled us to do that. This church enabled us to do that. You enable us to be there. We won't stop till the whole world knows. And I, I'm asking you as a church, okay? Pastor can only do what the church will let him do. You can do things, say things, pressurize things, where this man goes in other directions than what he's going now. Don't do that. Pastor, keep it up. Keep an emphasis where God's heartbeat is. Keep an emphasis on what will enable you to grow. You, you're not stupid people. You can put two and two together. This is the way we grow. A giving church is a growing church. A growing church is a giving church. That's probably about all the preaching you're going to get from me today. Pastor, keep it up. Church, keep it up. Praise God. Just a seminar, would you join me? At the end of the month, I will be married to this lady for 58 years. Now, keep in mind, uh, we were just children when we got married. <laughs> and they did. They said it never worked. But, hey, look, here we are. Thank you so much for this opportunity to come and share with you this morning. We are enjoying being a part of Cornerstone. We're enjoying being a part. Thank you so much. And I don't know if Brother Simino noticed that sitting, standing right uh Standing right in the middle up there is the Tanzanian flag, the green, the blue, and the black. That's the Tanzanian flag. As he spoke about these stories from Tanzania, it made me a little homesick. God was so good to us when we were there. He blessed in so many ways. We were privileged to found the work in Tanzania and also to go into Botswana and reopen a dead work. It had died out to nothing. We were so so privileged. I want to share with you just a little bit this morning. I want to share with you something about uh, Bougainvillea. How many of you know what Bougainvillea is? 
You don't see Bougainville a lot in this part of the country, but few of you know what it is. I want to be like Bougainvillea. Now, why would I say that? Bougainvillea is a tropical plant. You don't see it a lot around here. You see it in Florida, California, South America. We had it in Kenya and Tanzania. We had it over in Sierra Leone. We had it down in Botswana. It only blooms at the hottest, driest time of the year. And I wondered about that. I'd never put it all together, but one day I was listening to a horticulturist speak uh, on the radio, and he, a late, he was having people call in and ask him questions, and a lady called in and she said, can you please help me with my bougainvillea plant? It's not blooming anymore. And by the way, it doesn't bloom. The leaves just turn a different color. So he said, oh, well, tell me what you're doing to the poor plant. And she said, well, I'm treating it really well. I put it into a new pot. I'm watering it. I'm not overwatering. He said, well, that's your trouble right there. He says, but for bougainvillea to really thrive, it has to be tortured. I listened a little further and I thought, what does he really mean? He said, if you take that plant and you let it grow into that pot and you quit watering it so much, it's going to start blooming again. And I thought, hmm, I want to be like Bougainvillea. When it gets hot, when it gets hard, when times get rough, I want to be shining bright. In the hottest, the driest times in, in uh, Botswana, and Botswana was a desert country and it was hot and it was dry, Bougainvillea was the plant that survived the longest because its roots go deep, deep into the soil. I want to be like Bougainvillea. I want to tell you a story, and I doubt I'll get through it without crying because it's emotional. We had a tragedy strike our family. I was in, uh, I'd gone back over to Botswana to tend to some business. We had already retired from Botswana and came back to the States. And I went over to Botswana to handle some last minute business with, the, with our school that I was privileged to operate for 16 years and as a side part of our mission work. And I was in a hotel room all by myself, and I uh, had been in contact with my daughter-in-law and my son by Skype. They were in Malawi. They were missionaries in Malawi at the time. And I was in a hotel room all by myself, and I heard at 6 o'clock in the morning, I heard the Skype bell ring. And I knew it was my daughter-in-law, Vicky, calling me. I knew something had to be wrong. So I jumped out of bed, opened my computer, and there was Vicky on Skype. Mom! Mom! Timothy's so sick, he's thrashing about, we can't wake him up, and we're taking him to the hospital. You see, I'd lived in Africa at that time almost, well, almost 30 years, and I knew when she said we have to take him to the hospital, I knew where she was taking him. I knew what kind of conditions were there. I said, well, Vicki, just take him, just take him. Hopefully they can do something for him, so just take him. So all through the day, we waited for news for that child, and later in the day, we found out that he had meningitis, the worst kind of meningitis. We knew he was sick before they called, but we didn't know how sick, but he had meningitis. And I knew what kind of conditions that hospital was. I'd been in African hospitals before, and the nurses and the doctors are so kind, and some are well-trained and some aren't, but they're so kind, and they just say, okay, you're going to be all right. You're gonna, you may be bleeding out, but they'll say, you're going to be all right. So they kept telling my, da my daughter-in-law and my son, he's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. But we knew unless God intervened, he wasn't going to be okay. So we went out through that day not knowing what was going to happen to that child. Listen. This is where prayers are so important. Missionaries get in dark, dark times where they can't pray. It's too dark. But they depend upon you. The prayers have been stored up for that family. And 
prayer went off around the world. Some of you may even remember Timo, praying for Timo back in 2008. Prayer went out around the world, and people began to pray for that child. And there was a medevac plane come up from South Africa and got him and took him down to South Africa. The whole time he was in Malawi, 24 hours in that little hospital room, they could do nothing for him. He continued to thrash and to, to have uh, seizures. But when that South African medevac team got on ground, they were able to do something for him. They medevaced him down to South Africa and were able to take care of him. During that time, we were all praying. We are asking God to help us. And scriptures began to come to me. And I remember reading Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. He knew why I needed to be in Botswana at that particular time. He knew when that medevac team needed to get there. He knew exactly what that child needed. He, needed, he knew exactly the support that that missionary couple needed. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Remember Job? Poor Job. He went through so much. Even his wife said, curse God and die. But God remained, but Job remained faithful to God. Oh, yeah. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I want to be like Bougainvillian. When it gets hot, when it gets really, really tough, when things, when we can't see the way, I want to shine the brightest. I want to remember that God has me in the palm of his hand, and he is guiding me, he is leading me, he is directing my paths. Though he slay me, Job said, yet, though my grandchild lies in a hospital bed, we don't know if he's going to live. If he lives, we don't know what the outcome is going to be. They gave us very little hope, but I will trust. He directs my paths. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I just, they have, I admire those three characters. They said, we know that he can deliver us. We look in Daniel, the third chapter, the 17th through the 18th verse. He said, if that, if that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. They believed it. But you know what else? But if not, let it be known to you, hear this, let it be known to you, O king, we will not serve your gods. We will worship, we will, we will worship our God. We will not worship the God that you have set before us. I will not bend, I will not bow. I want to be like Bougainville. I want God to direct my paths when times get tough. I want to dig deep within my soul with the strength that comes, not from me, not from me, but through the power of the Holy Ghost. Was Job discouraged? Of course he was, but he never gave up. Somehow, somebody here is discouraged. I just felt it in my spirit this morning. Never give up. He knows where you are. There's a scripture that says that all these 40 years, all wandering through, he never, all wandering through the wilderness these 40 years, he never, he never left us. He was with us. Never give up. Trust in him. Believe in him. Depend upon him. I want to share with you some pictures of some people that uh, for over 20 years have walked the walk through the thick and the thin because of you, because you gave. They came to know the Lord Jesus over 20 years ago, and they're still today ministering. So I'm going to ask the media team if they would show some pictures at this time. We've got some slides, uh, or some stills, rather, and then... I think we've got a video clip. Let's see what we've got. 
she's going to narrate the pictures, and of course, I forgot to say something when I was up here. I told you I was going to tell you some stories, and I did, and some, some statistics about Botswana. Our church in Botswana, we started it in the living room of our own home with 13 people present. We began to track from that time how many people received the Holy Ghost, how many people were baptized in Jesus' name. Now, this is your story that I'm telling you. This is not a number that somebody put scraped together every Sunday, but we had a system for this. And I actually have the, uh, the Excel program <laughs> on one of my computers that shows this from the beginning days. We came through several building programs. We, we grew, we gave, and uh, there was a time in the building that you will see on one of the video clips. One Sunday morning, we stopped the service. There was a little lady there. We introduced that little lady. Don't remember her name, but I got it written down. She was the 1,000th person to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking other tongues in that congregation. In a couple of months, it took a couple of months longer, but we were on a Sunday and we baptized some people and I stopped the service then and I introduced a young man who was the 1,000th person to be baptized in Jesus' name in that congregation. That's what your giving helped us do. There were many times when we were in Tanzania, many times in Botswana, that we didn't know we could go on. But you know what? We knew that we could not not go on. Yes. We had to go on. You know, you want to hear the rest of the story about Timo, yes. the grandson? God touched him in a miraculous way. Uh, the meningitis, we didn't know uh, what brain damage would take place during the time he was unconscious for almost four days. And when they brought him out of an induced coma, uh, his dad asked him, Timo, do you know where you are? Timo said, Mars. And we knew immediately Timo was fine. <laughs> His dad said, why are you saying Mars? He said, because this is a weird looking place. <laughs> Timo today is probably filling a pulpit in Houston, Texas. He's on the pastoral staff at Victory Worship Center in Houston, Texas. God is good. God is good all the time. Never, ever give up. Always fight the battle. So media team, were you able to show the pictures? Okay, they're not able. Somehow something's happened. You know what? When you depend on technology, yeah. something always happens. Let me just tell you, I got just a few minutes. I'm just going to tell you about Sutton and Lebahang. Sutton came to our gate in Botswana, and he said, I am looking for a job. That's translated. I'm looking for a job. We gave Sutton a job. He worked in our garden. He worked, that's, that's yard to you guys. And he worked at our school. He, he oversaw our maintenance team at our school. He worked around the church. He eventually worked in the church office. And he was just a really neat guy. But Sutton stuttered very, very badly. But he wanted to preach the gospel. We thought, how is he going to preach if he has such a serious speech impediment? Well, you know what? God healed him of that stuttering. He today, he pastors a very strong church in the city of, Mol city of Molipolole. You want to say that? Molipolole? <laughs> God healed him of his stuttering. Now he is a great, great preacher. He married Lebahang. They have children and they are living for God and working in the church. Tumela and Loreto Molefi. I'm sorry, Kefutile. I'll say that again, Kefutile. Uh, Tamelo and Lorato. Tamelo worked at our front desk at our school. Lorato was a little Sunday school girl come to school out of the village barefoot. Today, she is the children's leader of the whole church in Botswana, and he is a pastor. Paul and Mari V. Villanueva. Paul came to our school as just a, a little guy. He was one of the naughtiest kids we ever had. He got expelled two times 
actually maybe even three times. <laughs> the third time he said, this will never happen to me again. He decided he better just pull his socks up and behave himself. He became a fine, fine young man. He's a worship leader for the church in Botswana. He has his own school that he's overseeing, and he is a pastor of a thriving church. Came from nowhere. Hallelujah. Then there's Tuto and Angela. Tuto and Angela came to the Lord as secondary school students, high school students, there when we were uh, in, the, in the middle 90s. They came to the Lord, and then they led Bible, uh, Bible meetings there in their school. Today, they have a beautiful, beautiful family, and they're working for the Lord. More than 20 years ago, they came to God, and they're still working today. And then there's Brother Olabahang and Sister Haoni Molethi, who they came into the same group of secondary students out. There must have been 50 or 60 of them that came in at the same time. And Brother Haoni, uh, Sister Haoni and Brother Olabahang, Brother Olabahang graduated from secondary school, went to uh, Oxford University in the UK, still living for God, serving God. Sister Haoni went to university in, uh, in Australia, still serving God, living for God. They came back, got married, and now they pastor the church that we pastored there in uh, Habroni, Botswana, and he is the, the general superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church of Botswana. God brought them so far because of you. If you could see their beautiful faces so far because of you, because you gave. If you could see the video clip, and maybe uh, later on the problems can be solved, but you would see a group of people dancing and worshiping. We had a large, a large building that we worshiped in the last few years that we were there, held about 1,500 people, and there was a large group of people dancing, in a circle around the church, worshiping God. And a choir, about the size of your choir, maybe a little larger, worshiping and singing because you gave. Thank you, Cornerstone Tabernacle, for the many years of sacrifice to giving, not to just us, but to many other missions around the world. Thank you so much. presence of the Lord. How many want to go to Moli Pololi? <laughs> uh, whatever she said. <laughs> We're having a comical moment. But the presence of the Lord is here today to call us to his purpose. That purpose could be while lunch is happening today. You see that server that has that look in their eye. They don't know what the next step is going to be. But you have their next step living inside you. His name is Jesus. Would you join with me and let's thank the Lord for the work of this church that has happened for many, many years. And let's thank the Lord for what's about to happen for this church in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift our hands and we thank you for the outpouring of the spirit that has been funded by this church supported by this church worldwide come on church help me lift up your voice and thank the lord we're not dismissed yet let's thank the lord god i want to thank you for everything that's happened positive for your kingdom but now we're praying for the present and the future launch us forward into your great plan and great purpose in the name of the lord jesus christ let an outpouring of the holy ghost come up on this city Oh, use this congregation to cause an explosion of power and Pentecostal outpouring. Somebody in the house rejoice with us right now. Oh, hallelujah. Can I call this church to praise and worship the Lord right now? Can I call you to give God praise right now? Oh, God's going to use me. God's going to use me. Holy, 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 holy. In Jesus' name, find somebody beside you and tell them, God is using you. God is going to use you. You are being used of God to affect the world for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
What a beautiful presence of the Lord that has been here today. Mission Sunday, thank you for giving. Thank you for going today as you start your week. Today's the first day of the week. As you start your week this week, let a missionary spirit be released. Everywhere you go, till the whole world knows, we're going to keep on telling it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you Wednesday night. Greet somebody in Jesus' name. If you see a friend that you haven't met yet, connect with them right now. God bless you as you're dismissed.